Hi everyone, I'm Marrier, and today we're going to be looking at more of Joe Katz, a crap guide to D&D, specifically alignment and character sheets. Now, alignment seems pretty straightforward, and I'm honestly surprised he's spending as long on it as the video in this seems to be indicating, because I've basically heard through the grapevine that, short of role-playing purposes, alignment no longer means, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, anything. It's literally useless Positive good, lawful evil, neutral stupid. I'm looking at you. You know who you are. It doesn't mean anything. It is literally like, hey, do you want to use it as a role play? No? Okay, it doesn't matter. Mine is like a handful of spells that really don't matter. It would come up that all that often. Just throw it out there. So I'm kind of wondering, what is this going to be about? Because it has to be on the role play aspect. But a lot of his stuff has been more about the, hey, these things are stupid. I'm looking at you, Ranger. Yeah, I know rangers have abilities to do interesting builds. But you can also do better as a fighter, or as a warlock apparently, or a barbarian, or literally anyone. Yeah. A barbarian with a bow. I don't think he'd actually shoot anyone, he'd just probably hit people with the bow. I'd actually do that, that sounds funny, I love it. I kind of want to do that now, shit. So we're just going to move on before I get more ideas, and check out both videos. So again, there are going to be a link below to both the alignment video and the character sheet video. Make sure to hit them up, it's Joe Cat. you probably already did because he's freaking amazing. But do it anyways, because it's YouTube, you probably... I mean, it's YouTube, just go watch it. Yeah. After you're done with that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, because... Sure, you're here right now, you still watch this? Great! <laughs> Let's get started. Hi, I just oh. wanted to take a sec for more people to notice and understand this disclaimer. Most importantly, this part, I don't actually want to upset anybody. It's all Aww. part of the character, and I hope everyone keeps that in mind. We good? Wait, okay. are you saying Joe Cat and Joe Everybody likes personality quizzes, right? See what's your spirit animal, how burnt of a toasted slice of bread you are, what's your worst trait as an employee based on the brand of cereal you like to buy. They're great because most Wiggles? of the time, if you don't like what the quiz results give you, you can look up which answers contribute no, I'm to definitely what result and just get the one that you wanted in the first place definitely and then brag about it on social media. Wow, would you look at that? I'm such a Slytherin because I'm so cunning, right? Yeah, well, joke's on you. That was all an intelligent ruse. I'm actually a Ravenclaw. Or am I? Same with star signs. They're just vague enough that they can boil down to you're a thoughtful individual who sometimes overthinks things and can be impulsive but in the end of the day wants to do the best that you can for the people you care Isn't about like while everyone? never settling for oh. the worst possible outcome and I could say I just described a Libra and they'd eat that shit up like they're a pet that just found some stray cardboard luckily Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have any of that dumb personality shit that nerds argue about for hours on the internet in hopes to totally pwn the other side with facts and logic or anything welcome to a crap guide to D&D I think he was being completely serious. Nope. I, I see literally no way that could be anything but the absolute truth. Oh, the little gobbo's still in the... Oh, that's awesome. Also, apparently he's making animations of that? I didn't see him on this playlist, but if anyone knows where I can get a playlist, just the gobbo animations. I just realized I'm calling them gobbos publicly. There's no way I'm going to remember to edit that out, damn it. Ah, well. It just... Yeah. If anyone could find more of the animations for the... Goblins, he's done. I would appreciate that. Also, yeah. Huh. Just noticed the fighter has an aftershave. Was that always there? I, huh. I missed that. Four or five o'clock shadow, that's the term. An old relic of the past and the easiest way to start fights both on and offline, the D&D yeah. alignment chart is its version of a personality quiz that no one can agree on. You've likely seen- <laughs> No, 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 okay. Chaotic evil. Yeah. True neutral. Nah, come on. Speedwagon transcends alignment. He is the alignment chart. Get it right, Joe Cat. I am offended by your very much out of question assumption of Speedwagon's alignment. Yeah, that's accurate. Although chaotic stupid. Yeah. Honestly, you should probably fit more evil, but let's go with it. More importantly, I wanted to go back because if I'm right, did he just put his barbarian, the little... Yeah, no, the barbarian is neutral evil. <laughs> no idea who that is. No idea who that is. Druid, fighter. Ooh, the sorcerer is chaotic neutral. Nice. Oh, the ranger was chaotic. Good. Forgot who that is. And, oh yeah, the wizard. Noise. 
can agree on. You've likely seen this tic-tac-toe board being used with pop culture characters being placed Bread? in each segment, giving a vague idea of what each of them means. But then all is it takes is for you to put someone in the wrong nope. place, and then everyone starts throwing fists as if they had just found out that you use their facial hair razor to shave your butthole. He's Remember, characters good. can only be one alignment there. forever, and must only ever do things considered to be that alignment, because yes. thinking about character death and development is hard, and when people disagree he, with me, I take I it as a personal attack. More importantly, as a player, you get to say what your character is. No, 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 alignment. no, 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 go. You, god damn it. Okay, seriously, you put in so many lines here. Grabul Jean is a boss and can fly. Oh god, does that thing have some name? Grabul I I don't even. Okay. Okay, boss of what? And how did he become the boss? Also, does he have any personality traits? I'm not feeling personally attacked by an unthought out character. I'm not being. I, I'm not. I. I This uh, this bit personally offends me. It, it's a personal attack that I know is entirely unintentional, so I'm going to take it as a personal attack. <laughs> Fuck you! He is he just is okay. Why well, you gotta be on my back and shut and shut shut up? <laughs> God, the bloodshot eyes. <laughs> oh Jesus! You little froggo though. He's a I boss, take it as nothing. a personal attack. More importantly, as a player, you get to say what your character's alignment is, and no I'm one can so ever chaotic. debate that you're not playing that alignment because you know your character better than they do, and they're just jealous and wish their scrubby sheet was as cool as yours so they can <laughs> suck fat <laughs> nards. <laughs> Lawful. <laughs> Small yeah. smooth brains think lawful means the literal sense, as in following the law, but no. instead what it really means is having a strict set of rules, whether it be moral, legal, or because your boss is telling you to do it. It's one of yeah, the most predictable yeah. alignments. 99% of the time when a lawful character sets out to do something through a promise or obligation, they actually follow through, <laughs> which is why they make Cat. great fitness instructors, because when they say they're not going to fuck your mom, they actually don't fuck your mom. A lawful good act is keeping the promise because it's the right thing to do. A lawful neutral keeps the promise because it is a promise, and they're going to stick by it, even if fucking your mom saves the universe. And a lawful evil keeps the promise because they're going to fuck your dad instead since he well, technically, technically didn't say anything about him. Hoik, Inversely, cat. the chaotic side of the chart are for characters that don't give a fuck about their integrity and do whatever the hell they want because they feel like I it. Small mind. smooth brains will yeah. use this alignment as an excuse to be a total wang rod and have an inconsistent character with no definable oh, traits. Jesus. Also known as the chaotic alignment's more recognizable cousin, the stupid alignment, with its constant wacky lol so random XD approach to play. This is the second time this video has uh, personally attacked me. I'm seeing a pattern here. I can also see why this video was the one that he had to make the disclaimer of because there is so much right now that's like, yeah, I know I'm starting a fight. I I'm just, I'm just going to start all the fight. Okay, we got chaotic feelings, personal freedom, instinct, adaptability, stupid. Think D and D memes are funny in play. I'm so quirky and random. Bee. Anoik equals chaotic, right? Okay, this is the third time I have felt personally attacked. Oh, God, I actually resemble this way more than I'm actually starting to feel comfortable with. It's, it's going beyond just thinking it's funny because this describes me more. Oh, oh, God. The sarcastic, dumb little memes he's putting up accurately describe my entire playstyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> am, am I the bad guy? Oh, shit, am I? I have a feeling I know exactly what the people from my uh, playgroup are going to write in the comment down below. And it's going to be, yes. And he'll be in that tone of voice, too. And I won't even acknowledge that they said it because I, <laughs> yeah, it's probably deserved at this point. Feeling like very personally attacked by this video. It's <laughs> a wacky lol, so random XD approach to play. It was a worthwhile hat. I mean, I never did that. Most examples of chaotic acts are lying, cheating, and stealing, aka yep. part of a rogue's balanced breakfast. A chaotic good is stealing from the rich and giving to the less fortunate. A chaotic neutral cheats to win a tournament and uses the winnings to eat something aside from a bread sandwich every Ooh. night. And a chaotic evil will lie about not fucking your dad again and then burst into his bedroom as soon as you blink <laughs> like a really slutty weeping angel. <laughs> The good and evil sides of the alignment chart are pretty straightforward. Good girl? is if you're a good person, and evil if you're a good person. God, you... Okay, let's go back here. Evil. Simple design. Cute pigtails. Winning smile. Adorable dress. Good. Tiny beady eyes. No cute pigtails. Overly designed robes. The robes are awesome. Ugly frown. Yeah, yeah, sure. Evil does that. 
straightforward. Good is if you're a good person and evil if you're a jackass. But that's yep. a small, smooth brain, surface level understanding of good Duh. and evil. As in, no, just because you don't stab people doesn't mean not stabbing them is a good act just because stabbing them is a lot easier. Good acts are ones that go out of the character's way to do good and help others, sometimes even to the good person's detriment. Oh, geez, and oftentimes, what? even if there's no promise of any sort of reward in return for the act. Like using your own hand to get a friend's favorite dangerous? Lego set out of the toilet, even after a night of really spicy curry. In contrast, evil is pretty straightforward, i.e. actions that could actively harm people or not caring about how those actions could knowingly harm people. An evil act would be being the person who threw the Lego set into the toilet, knowing full well it could be somebody's favorite. But good and evil doesn't just mean motives, it means methods, too. And just because you have nice ends doesn't mean having mean means makes it, it any less mean. Example, oh, here, you here, here, here. need to find out where they're hiding their captive so you can save them. A good act could be offering some snacks and a binge watch of their favorite show in Ooh. return for information, whereas an evil act would be chopping their nipples off. That that is oddly specific. I, I... the neutral cross of the okay. alignment chart is for players who are terrified of commitment and refers to acts that either don't fall on either side of the good, evil, or lawful, chaotic side of the spectrum, or characters that are that? forced for choice and like to do whatever tickles their pickle the most, depending on the situation. Maybe they'll be employee of the month for one boss and then shit on the desk of their next. Basically, the neutral ends of the alignment chart are the most pure and concentrated, like the curvature of my butt cheeks, and do basically anything and everything about that, that could be considered the essence of that side of the chart. And of course, the middle ground, true neutral, aka the one that's always playing devil's advocate for literally everything, like they spend. 10 hours a day discussing opinions on Reddit. And there you have it, the totally accurate, God, totally God. objective descriptions for each side of the alignment chart with no room for any other interpretations whatsoever. And if anyone tries to argue otherwise, they can suck fat nards. Also, never let uh -huh. players pick their own alignment because when they do, it actually looks like this. But that's totally because I'm such a Gemini. No fun allowed. No personality. Lol, I'm so random. I just... Rules lawyer. No personality. Get a evil. Or lol, I'm so random. Nobody. Murder. Wait, really? Nobody? I, I, I think I actually had more there. Did he have? No, no, I think it's still blocked. I want to see what he wrote, damn it. Nobody will ever pick Lee. Pickle? Why, why nobody would ever pickle? Pickly? Is nobody ever lawful evil? Huh. And then murder hobo and murder hobo. Well, that's just wrong. All of them should be murder hobo. If murder hobo was an option, it would be everything. I mean, I'm not saying my campaign has devolved into that. We started that way. Granted, we started that way because I was the murder victim. Still holding a grudge over that. Not feeling attacked. Not feeling attacked at all. Looks like this. But that's totally because I'm such a Gemini and we don't... Is that a symbol for Gemini? Likes food and breathing. Oh my god, I like breathing. Has skid? I have skid. Dumb. Well, at least we know that one's not accurate. Also smart. Oh, yeah. You must like things and stuff. I like things. Avoid stinks. So, would that imply other people actively go for the stinks? That is a level of fetish I am not okay with comprehending. I don't think people are self-aware enough to be able to categorize themselves without being subconsciously influenced by their own personal biases. And now you know how to use alignment. You're welcome. So, um, yeah. That last video. It's not so much that those were insulting, because they weren't. It was funny as hell, and I loved it. But, uh, I, I, I might, um, resemble a few of those, uh, completely unrealistic tropes. I mean, can you imagine someone who actually just played stupid because they thought it was funny and th 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 thought memes were a good way to base your character? Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, um, yeah. This is not a mirror I like looking into right now. Yeah. It was actually a bit uncomfortable because I was like, oh, this this is literally how I play the game. I am that monster, apparently. Yeah. I resemble the exaggerations he used to make a joke. Thankfully, I'm not self-aware enough to care. So let's go and just do the next one. Character sheet, which it actually looks like he's broken up into various aspects. So this is going to be an actual guide on how to use it, which is useful because I have been letting roll 20 do all of this stuff, so I have literally no idea how to do any of this outside of a program doing it for me. And I know I put some of the stats in wrong, so I probably actually need this one. If I pause, I'm not doing it because I want to say anything. I'm doing it because I actually want to rewatch because I might need this. And by need this, I mean, I know I need this. I, I fuck up the sheets so badly all the time.
You may think you know D&D, but guess Ooh. what, nerd? You don't. Not until you understand what the fuck is all this shit. What is Still this? Don't. What is this? Why do I need to know animal handling? No idea how the any of those are generated. Arcana? The shit are hit dice. What's a proficiency bonus? So Why are electrum pieces so stupid? Well, strap really in for those a formal education I'm, as people here. And, I'm gonna uh, reteach you how to do math because let's be honest, you still use a calculator to add and subtract single digits. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. English major, I've done that. Do it a lot, actually. Oh, he put the lawful thing behind him. This is your that. character sheet. Your character cannot exist without it. However, it doesn't always have to look like this. It what? could be a simple flashcard, a scribbling in a notebook, or an app on your phone if you like being spoon-fed like a baby who laughs at the Wee. phrase pee-pee-poo-poo watermelon. <laughs> and when playing <laughs> as a character in D&D, you will refer to the character sheet whenever you have to roll the various kinds of dice that yep. decide the outcome of your actions. Many are intimidated by this mighty thingy's magnificence, but mourn them ye shall not, for they be weak-ass bitches. It looks like a whole lot, Accurate. but get a hold of yourself I'm and take it one step at a time. The first person to voluntarily stick something up their butt didn't get anywhere by crying about how intimidating it is to stick something up their butt they just did it and look how far we've come first of all at the top we have the basics name, peg class, Lord? race background and dumb back to check quiz it. No. results these things will determine later things so don't worry about those things until we come to them later but if you don't know what you want those to be <laughs> yet, that's okay lesbian. we can mosey on over to this tower of <laughs> tips, which will be the most important part of your entire sheet ability scores these are your basic stats, the strengths and weaknesses of your character, and the main determiner of whether you're gonna be snooping or spooping when dungeoning those dragons. Strength is your strength. I'm sorry, what was that? Is that the bard hiding inside of a fursuit owl bear? Yeah. Yes, it is. It is the bard hiding in a fursuit owl bear. I want to ask if there was a story behind this. But I'm afraid there might be and someone might tell me and then I would have to know. So for my own sanity, I'm just going to drop it. Strength is your strong, heaping muscles. How much shit you can carry, how well you can push or pull weak. heavy objects, and how well you can make your pecs dance. It also oh, determines the weapon damage for most melee weapons, but we'll get to that later. Next is dexterity, the little bitch version of strength. It's your hand-eye coordination, reflexes, and balance, and how well you can hide your handheld when you hear mommy and daddy stomping also up to your defense. room like Godzilla. Where strength is about how you can plow through a table being thrown e. at you, dex is about how you can limbo walk under it. Dex can also be used with what are called finesse weapons, which lets you pick between the two physical stats when rolling attacks and damage in case you skipped arm day. Constitution is your general vitality, how healthy you are, your endurance, and is used for rolls as frequently as a millennial <laughs> eats breakfast. It mostly only affects your overall hit points, but it's still fairly important important and can be treated like videos? the amount of candy in your pantry. You only realize how little you have once you see somebody else with lots of it. Intelligence yeah. is dumb. That is unless you pump it up for big galaxy brains and become smarter than the average bugbear. Oh, it's used God. for general knowledge based adorable. checks involving things like recalling info on history, magic, religion, and most importantly, defeating things with facts and logic. To generalize, it's book smart, so you know a lot of things. Me. It's also used as a spellcasting modifier for both the wizard and artificer classes. Oh, don't Either worry, we'll get to spellcasting later. Impatient bitch. Wisdom <laughs> is one that confuses a lot of people because they think it's just like intelligence. And I'm willing to bet those are the kinds of people who think cheese and mayonnaise can coexist on a sandwich. No, wisdom is more your street smarts and also general I'm sorry, but I'm fine with being personally attacked incredibly by that last video. But saying cheese and mayo are not a perfectly acceptable condiment option? No, no. We have, we're, we're going to have words, Joe Cat. I mean, it's a good thing you have that disclaimer up there, but I'm going to blame you anyways, even though you completely said these are not your own opinions, because I'm sorry. Mayo and cheese are perfect on a sandwich. I will sit here and probably just watch the rest of the video and enjoy because it's an amazing video so far. Because I have principles, which really mean nothing in this case. But I'm going to say it anyways. Pff, mayo and cheese can't coexist. You monster. You should feel honestly pretty good because this is a great video and you did a great job. But we're going to ignore that and say that you shouldn't. I'm glad we had this talk general senses. It's knowledge based on practice yeah, and sure. experience. No, not that experience. And it's the difference between knowing if a plan is poisonous and knowing that the person who told you it was it's poisonous is lied about it because they don't want you finding their beloved lemon tree, you damn lemon whores. It's also the casting lemon ability whores? of clerics, druids, and rangers. Finally is charisma, how to tell if your character fucks. Whoa, it can mean anything okay. from your general like ability to approachability to public speaking ability to betting ability. It's your charm, oh. your confidence, and general way with people Bard whether you lure them into a trap or aggressively scaring them so bad that they actively jump onto the e. trap out of fearful compliance. And it's the casting ability for bards, power I love it. I love this. Warlocks, because remember, you gotta... I'm sorry. I, I I don't have anything to say. I just really want to see this picture again. Yes, the sorcerer, the druid. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. That's the warlock, isn't it? 
Oh, just I, I love this. The bard is doing the heel kick, but also the T pose. This I don't is that a bicycle in the air? And then there's just the paladin who has it as well, and he's just lumped in. Oh yeah, and that's the that's the warlock, right? And it's just lumped as like, oh, I can't believe I'm stuck with these guys. I, I love this picture. I love this picture so much. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. You gotta I love look it. pretty for the boss patron if you want to get that big Eldritch bonus. Damn. Now that we're done covering ability scores, we can go over how you get them. And there are three generally used methods. If you're a wee baby who needs to meticulously make your perfect OC or else it won't be faithful to your precious self insert, there's the point buy system, which works like what? a basic video game. All your stats start at 8 and you have a pool of oh, yeah, points, we did that. 27, to distribute between honestly. them all. With the cost going up to 2 points per ability score increase higher than 13 and the cap being at 15. If you hate math, that's too bad because there's gonna be loads of it later, but if you want slightly less of it, there's also standard array, which gives you the numbers 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 to arrange on any of your scores. But if that's still too much choice and you want to put your character into the grubby hands of Arn Jesus, there's the most widely known method, which is rolling 4d6 no no and dropping finger. the lowest number. This can get you scores anywhere from a whopping 18 to a poopoo dookie 3 if your DM is a sadist and doesn't do grace rolls, but often results in overall yeah. chunk of your stats. Whatever method you do, each number corresponds to a second number. Who boy, are you overwhelmed yet? You have to keep yes. track of two whole numbers. What a crazy catastrophic conundrum. I mean, he's Don't joking, but yeah. Lobes because those big numbers scares aren't really me. that important. There's Their main purpose the is to determine a smaller number called a modifier, which means you can totally ignore this number when you actually start to pillage the village. There's a fairly simple mathematical equation to figure out what each number's bonus is, but I know you're a dumb, dumb, silly pants, so here's a chart. Now, will you stop crying about it? The One second, I'm, I'm actually just going to look at that chart quickly. Uh, I'm not saying I need it. I think that goes unsaid at this point. You can go to a plus tier. That is a lot of plus. That That is a lot of plus on this. Ah. I mean, I'm okay, so I'm more in this range with a lot of my stats. Hit a few with charisma on this one, and 20 will get me to plus five. But then they actually have a chart that already goes down to plus 30. Like, what is that for? Oh, it's probably high end monsters. Dear God, plus 10. Oh, those things are going to kill us. Sorry, I'm just. My party is currently level four. But our DM decided, you know, it's going to be fun. <laughs> having them fight a CR-13 demon. Yeah. Surprisingly survived that. I'm just going to have to remember this <laughs> for knowing how screwed I am later. About it. The reason the ability modifier is important is because it's what you add to your dice roll whenever they're okay. applicable. So if you have oh, a lot of nice. strength, you're going to get a little extra oomph whenever you need to punch the vending machine when your chips are stuck. Damn. Have low charisma, and you're going to have a hard time convincing the janitor that you weren't the one who broke it. Keep in mind, you can still roll great with low stats and roll badly with high stats. But having guilty. high ability Very modifiers guilty. makes it so your rolls are more in your favor. Now that you have your all scores I all placed and your modifiers figured out, now we can determine where those modifiers go, which means we can look at this spaghetti jumbly mess this, of words. Now don't this go running them on a calculator just yet. It's so easy, even fighter man can figure it out. At the Oh, here are your I'm saving throws. These now. are your defenses and resistances, the various bad bads that want to smush Wisdom? you up and turn you into a turret. Oh, geez. traps area of effects, most spells, and that little voice telling you that you're making poor decisions. You don't roll I these on your own most of the time. Instead, your DM will ask you to make them whenever to. you're put in harm's way. And you see these little spaces? That's where your ability modifiers go. <gasps> oh. That's right! This way, you can refer to these numbers to add to your rolls whenever they come into play. Oh, that's Look so much easier. I could just give you a wedgie right now. Why don't we just have those stats, These are the various different capabilities your character is able to do in a regular game of D&D. And each one is affected by your ability score just like your saving throws. Oh. And just like your saving throws, there's this trusty little space for you to put your awesome stonking and or poodoo modifiers. And how can you tell what ability mod goes where? Well, you foolish mortal wombat. Just look at this helpful wombat? little parenthesis that tells you what it's attributed to. Go down the list and now you have a reference for what your character's good or terrible at. Got high decks? Well, congratulations, your sleight of hand means you can cheat at poker better. Bad at intelligence? Yeah. Well, then you're probably not gonna know who President Dingle Bloopy Noop is during the history segment of Are You Smarter Than a Cobalt? Now, we're not quite done yet with this long so We gotta go over what proficiency is. Proficiency. Proficiency is what separates the fake gamers from the this hardcore I actually don't top know. 500 ultra platinum uber pros. And you can find it in this little dingle. Starting at level 1, your proficiency bonus is 2, and it increases as you level up more and more. Basic oh. gist, it goes up by 1 oh, every 4 oh, oh, levels. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, damn it. This is actually one of those things I just want to look at. So, 1 through 4, 5 through 8. Oh, nice. We're going to have that up there. It caps out at 6 at level 17. Whoa. Okay. I had to readjust the legs. So, okay, that would explain why level 17 is considered the... Oh, I get it. That's the... Uh, okay, people always see there's like four tiers. It's basically when proficiency level goes up. Okay, that makes sense. Again, for someone who's probably played this for a while, it's like, oh. Huh. This is obvious. For me, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I really should have read the handbook. I have it. I only checked out the sorcerer options for magic because I thought they were fun. 
I'm very bad at this. <laughs> This number is added to anything you are proficient, aka trained with. And as far as saving throws and skills go, this will be signified by a little check mark. And which ones those oh. little check marks go into is determined by a combination of your class, background, and on rare occasion, race. For example, a fighter has proficiency in strength and con saving throws. Oh. So wha bam, wha bam. Add those numbers. They also get to choose two skills to be proficient with. Oh, so that's what those were for. The Normally you would pick your own, but here we're just going to no go with the Let's Probably say you're idea. also a hermit. You get these two skills to be proficient in. Wha bam. Wha bam. Always remember, whenever you're Do proficient with something, it means you get to add this sexy number on top of whatever appropriate ability modifier that's added to the dice roll you make. Ooh. Proficient in athletics, roll a d20, add strength mod, add proficiency bonus. And if at any point you forget what you're proficient in, just refer back to the player handbook for your race, class, and background. Congratulations, you now know how 90% of Dungeons & Dragons works. You feeling smart yet? You feeling like you can wrestle a spider cow? Well, sit the hell back down because we're not done yet. I'm not combat. even gonna think about that one, no. Now that we're done with the stat portion of the character sheet, we can look at the combat portion. This section is what you refer to when your DM I says clickety-clackety, you're about to get attackety. Up at the Roll very for top left uh, is yes, your armor class, or AC for short. This by default is 10 plus your dexterity modifier. No, I said the modifier, not the score. Pay attention. However, this can be increased by the different types of armor. Whichever one you start with will depend on which class you pick. Next is initiative. Ooh, nice. Whenever an encounter begins, initiative is rolled and determines who goes first and who stacks dice for the next half hour. This number is the same as your Sounds dexterity right. modifier and is added to your initiative roll at the beginning of an encounter. Oh, it this is? Last little See, block is speed, it which is how much you can move across the checkerboard each turn. Each square equaling five feet of movement if you're normal and use the imperial system and is initially determined Yee. by your race or how well you can try to convince your DM that your character ran track in high school. Below that are the hit points, <laughs> maximum, current, and temporary. Your maximum hit points is like an anime fan's figure shelf after about two conventions. You can try to fit. Nothing to say. I'm just impressed. Maybe a little terrified, but mostly impressed. I recognize a few of these figures too. Not all of them, but a good few of them. Is that a plushy Armstrong? That is a plushy Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. Ah, nice. I recognize her from... Not the Mofu. That was the spinoff. Not Guilty Gear? No, that's a game. Oh, God, I forgot what series she's from. Well, I feel like an idiot. Well, nothing new there, but just... Damn! I might be having figure envy bit more but we all know any extras are gonna have to sit on your desk next to all your empty cups it's determined by your class each Stop. one having its own size of hit die plus your constitution modifier i mean i'm i'm not personally attacked by that last comment although maybe i probably should put them in the sink by this point <clears throat> yeah because D&D is a communist game and believes in universal health care, at first level, you always receive the highest possible roll for hit points. But for every consecutive level, you can either roll for it or take the coward's way out and take the average increase instead. And then your current hit points are pretty Wait, obvious. Four? It's the amount of blood you still have inside your body at the moment. Reach zero and your character skips 50 three. seconds ahead of this video. Lastly, there are temporary hit points, which go above the maximum hit points and you only ever get on special occasions via spells, special abilities, or the local oh, that's grandma you get those. folk just made you a delicious bowl of her legally ambiguous performance-enhancing herbal oh, soup. Oh, jeez. a couple of things. Temporary hit points are kind of like the skin tight leather jackets from the 90s x-men movies in that they don't stack Quite on nice. top of each other and you have to pick which one you want to oh. keep if given multiple of them and if you're on the floor dying from a stab wound putting it on won't magically stitch it together and what are these two lonely boxicles well, scary and should be ignored student, they're yin and yang two sides of a coin one for when you're alive and the other for when you're unalive the former being your hit dice you have, have as many of these as your player these. level and can spend them whenever you take a sit for as long as a single episode of a netflix original oh, show to recover your hit points what size of hit dice is once again determined by your class and you get them back whenever you binge Actually, Aw, hit dice recovered, hit dice recovered. So the fire and the wizard are a thing now. Good for them, that's cool. Uh, you drop the popcorn though, you monster. How dare you waste food entire season's worth of a Netflix original show. But what yep. do you do when you're bleeding out while dressed in a 90s teenager's idea of a sexy badass superhero? If your current hit points ever reach zero, you have to look over on this touch-deprived I don't like this part. I, I don't like this. <laughs> where you gamble have with Grim each time hey, and roll your well-behaved D20 to see whether you look back to life or have a very awkward reunion with those bandits you killed five minutes ago. Oh, roll God. a 10 or higher and you gain a success. <laughs> Nine or lower and you get a failure. Two failures if you drop a fat, stinky nap. Yep. One. Three successes or a lucky 20 and you hop back to one Never hit point. Three failures and your character sheet becomes a DM's ass wiping supplies. You die. Attacks. This section is where you throw in all your various flavors of stabs. If you have a weapon or attack of some kind, you this write I know it in I here fucked up. I need to actually pay attention here. Say it's a sword and shield. Yes, both. You would write down the name of the weapon here. Then next to it is the attack bonus, Wait, aka how accurate shield? your weapon is. No, not the damage. This number is determined by your strength modifier for most weapons, unless it's a ranged weapon like a bow, in which case you use your.
No, could you? I mean, it's a stupid idea. But if you had a magic staff, I'm sorry, just this entire image right here, not this one, but the one I'm about to go back to, oh, that's further back than I thought. But the entire one where he was aiming the sword at someone like a scope? Yeah, this is, I, I, is it, would it be possible? Actually, I, not even going to lie right now, and this is something I'm like not even joking about at all, I want to seriously know this. Are there rules against putting a wand or a staff inside of a covering? Like, if you had a sword covering, and it's really just a sheath, but it looks like a sword, could I hold it up and aim the sword as if it is a gun while having, a, like, a magic wand in there and then firing the wand? Because if I can do that, I would do that in-game. But I don't know if there's any rules saying, hey, if your wand's covered, it doesn't count as being used or equipped or effective. I don't know, but I, I want to know this. If anyone knows if there's any rules about covering wands, let me know because I want to do this. It looks stupid. It's, I'm, I'm living down to the last video, aren't I? I'm living down to being the meme player. Oh dear God, I am literally describing it right now. I'm feeling very personally attacked in these videos and now I'm actually showing why. Yeah, I probably should check no, not too the late. damage. This number is determined by your strength modifier for most weapons, unless it's a ranged weapon like oh, a bow, God. in which case you use your dex mod instead. Or if it has the finesse property, which allows you to pick Ooh, either. On top of that, if you're proficient with that weapon, you can add that good old bonus to it too. But how do you know if you're proficient with a weapon? Forest. Let's put a peen in that. Alternatively, that if it's a spell worst? attack like Eldritch... <laughs> Your attack bonus oh, he's becomes still your spellcasting ability thing. modifier. Let's take a bard, for instance, which is the slut stat, plus your proficiency Accurate. bonus. Whenever you roll a d20 to see if your attack lands, you get to add this number to the total. Alternatively, alternatively, Ooh. if it's a spell or special item like a bunch of ball bearings thrown in attempts to recreate Home Alone that requires the enemy to make a saving throw, you can put the saving throw in difficulty class there instead. Oh, that's where I can but put that? how do you know what that number is? We're gonna put Not a P in that too. Is Shut that up. Once you have that number, to the right of it is the damage roll, aka how aggressively you're going to introduce the enemy's face to your sword. This is Dead. included in the description of whatever weapon or spell you are using. Whether it be a light jab at their insecurities, a proverbial pound oh, dear God. graphic proportions, or 8d6 fire damage in a 20-foot radius, just fire them! <laughs> Most weapons also include your strength modifier Fireball to the damage, awesome. unless, once again, it's a ranged weapon, which uses dexterity, or a finesse weapon, which uses either. The difference being that you don't add your proficiency bonus to this roll unless something says otherwise, and most spells don't add any additional modifiers oh. unless their wall of text explicitly says so. And They're lastly, make sure you include what kind of damage you're dealing, so your DM can know that your psychic damage vicious mockery won't do much against a revenant Whoa, because their self-esteem is already in the grave. To recap, when you attack, roll the <laughs> d20, add this number, which is these, then if you hit the enemy's AC, you roll these, and add this number, which is this. Spell casting. I mean, yes, but... We're gonna but... take a little break from the main sheet I'm to look at this sheet that has a list later. of all your accomplishments. Oh, look at that, it's blank. This mm. is the spell sheet. If you're playing a character that's capable of casting spells, then you're gonna take a gander over to this sheet whenever you cast them. Up a here lot. at the top, you can Very put your often. spell casting class in case you're absurd and tend to forget which spells go where, your casting ability, which will depend on the class, your spell save difficulty class, and your spell attack bonus. So hey, remember that out. peen we put in for spells in your attacks? Well, it's time to unpucker that sucker, because here it is, the spell save difficulty class, also known as DC. This is referred to whenever you cast a spell that requires the enemy to make a saving that? throw and how this is calculated is eight plus your cast mod plus your pof bone once you've got all that figured out the rest of the sheet is for keeping track of all your spells and slots oh. you write down the spells you have for each level how many Just slots you have ball. total as well as expend no no no, no 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 he wrote down a lot of things there and immediately zoomed out you're not getting off that easy get back here i was going to go for a mortal Kombat reference then it went all uh i was going to say departed but that's not accurate either What's the one with the rafts? Oh yeah, Deliverance. I love how I'm so good at using computers that I can just hit a button and then it doesn't do anything. Come on, appear words. Oh, ooh, they're appearing. I'm not just doing this because I might... Uh... You, 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 you. Okay, here we go. Wait, second level is hold person? How did I miss... Oh, because I was focusing more on enlarge reduce, yeah. Dynamite shenanigans. Right. Vicious Mockery, Eldritch Blast, Light. Oh, yeah. Sleep. I keep forgetting sleep is just... For... Thunder Wave is a level one, really. Oh, Healing Word. Fairy Fire. Useful, but it never seems to work. Mostly because everyone in my game moves around too much. Hold Person. Useful. Blindness, Deafness, and three. Just Fireball. Fireball is pretty awesome. Also Counterspell, but also Fireball. It's freaking cool, man.
level, how many slots you have total, as well as expended, and if you have the spell prepared or not. Yep. Note, only certain casting capable classes apply. Please refer to the player handbook or any other supplementary book regarding your class to find Yay, information. Yay, sorcerer! I have them all. Painting and preparing spells. What? Unsure of what spell slots are because your brain's too smooth? Well, sit the shit back, dit, you get, and listen up. The weakest level of spells are called cantrips, or sometimes level zero if you don't care about Apparently hurting they used your to not be, And they can be cast as many times a day as you want. Oh, First God, level is that spells the one he made? However, require a resource called spell slots to be cast, or else you'll have to find out the hard way that casting Thunder Wave without having your beauty sleep will make the life or death battle with the Underlord of Darkness oh, a no. lot less epic and a lot more smelling like last night's kebabs. And if the name well, Spell Slot makes things too confusing cloud is for you, thing. you can use my personal preferred name for them, Mage Bullets. How many Mage Bullets you have per spell level and how you recover them is determined by your specific class like and level. So just like 99% of this entirely redundant video, if you want more information, it's best to read the Parking Himbo. Yeah. And keep parking track of himbo? your goddamn slots. Because if you don't and just so happen to be able to cast five Mage Hands a day under Section 3, Chapter 1, Paragraph 12 of the Code of Gelatinous Noobs, the DM has full rights to eat your dice. Characteristics. <laughs> after looking in the mirror and taking some serious self-reflection after the apocalyptic chasm of the divide of the fan base that was fourth edition of D&D, Wizards of the Coast started to take into consideration for the next version of D&D what gameplay features they wanted to invite to future parties oh, and no. what gameplay features they needed to take out back and tell to think about the pretty that space butterflies. One such old yeller victim was the virgin alignment chart being completely overshadowed by the Chad personal characteristics, each one being a useful tool to remind you of your character's interests, motivations, shortcomings, and sexual fantasies. You never know if you're going to end up having a fuck. Yeah, I'll be honest, I completely, just, the alignment chart thing, eh, it's a little useless. But the flaws, bond, and all that stuff was something I introduced because I'll be honest, I ignore that. Like, I will pay lip service to the alignment chart, but that entire flaw, bond, that entire aspect of the chart, I just, okay, this might just be me, but uh, I started deleting that off my sheet because it was absolutely useless to how I was role-playing it and anything with my character. It literally was just wasted space, and I kind of wish I could just delete it and move the rest of the charts to have more room to write things. Am I the only one thinking that? Because it literally seems like a horrible, useless idea that you could just put somewhere else because it's just like, hey, here's just reminders of how you're going to role-play this as opposed to an alarm in charge, which may or may not be important, but this thing never is. Sorry, I, I might just have... Okay, apparently I have a lot of repressed rage about how much of a waste of space that is. And by repressed, I mean, no, I'm actually very open about this. No, it's not repressed in the slightest. Huh. Fuck your way out of a problem, so it helps to be prepared and oh know my. exactly what position would be the most in character. Personality traits are the broad strokes that of looks like it hurt. Likes, dislikes, interests, manners, whether or not they think something's a soup or a salad. <laughs> no, Ideals the are their drive, their principles, and what they vote for during election time. More if they demons. they don't care about voting at all and prefer to stay home to catch uh, a once-in-a-lifetime live marathon rerun of Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. Bonds are that personal cool. attachments and experiences they've had. It could be a good friend, a fond memory, or your favorite glow-in-the- dark bouncy ball that yeah, always seems to bounce these. a little bit They're weirder stupid. than all the other ones. And lastly, flaws, which 99% of the players don't actually understand and will probably put something inconsequential like clumsy not me though because i'm flawless and perfect oh you don't <laughs> think so well could a person with weaknesses do this all of this I'm other shit. I'm jealous, but... Now remember that peen we put in wondering how you know what weapons you're proficient with? That goes down here, what? by the way. And that, along with basically every other section we've yet to cover, can be figured out in this next part, which is what I like to call the copying it over from the book section of the character yep. creation, because that's basically that all you what do I did. for the rest of the sheet. I gotta pick a background, check the player handbook. What proficiencies do I get? Check the player handbook. Yep. What about feats and traits? Check the player handbook. God, What's my starting bars? Equipment? It's so check stupid, but it handbook. works. Or any other supplementary book relevant to your chosen race, class, background, a la Bolo's Guide, Xenothar's Guide, Everon Rising, etc. And with all that done, congratulations, you now have a completed and fully functioning character sheet, ready to be used once, then completely lost, then found again once you've already redone a second one. Or, if you're lucky, one that will be used consistently over the course of several years to the point where there's more eraser skid marks than pencil lead, and the once firm sheet of paper turning as soft oh, as a God. tissue person's dick after seeing you in the shower. Now you know how to use a character sheet. You're welcome. Hey, you kind of forgot to write your backstory. Fuck! <laughs> Please, please, someone, please tell me that there's a video coming up for backstory. I just want that to be the next thing he does. I mean, I know the next one is the DM, but I want there to be a backstory video because that would be hilarious. It's like, it's dark, brooding. I did all these things. Oh, yeah, wait, you're only level one? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> so this, this was a little more personal than I thought it would be. Yeah, apparently I resemble a lot of the <laughs> traits that he was jokingly hyping up. He's like, these are so stupid. No one actually is like this. Yeah. I'm I'm just going to go take a long, hard look in the mirror. It's like, oh, God, I am that guy. Not just that guy. I'm that guy. 
I feel like I need to go apologize to my play group. I'm not going to because I'm still that guy, but I feel like I should now. And this moment of self-awareness will probably go... What was I talking about? That probably wasn't important. So overall, I just really enjoyed this, and I like getting into the minutiae of the actual character sheet because I, I do actually need that. I, I will probably actually come back and look at this video again because I will need it whenever I don't just rely on Roll20 to do all of the grunt work for me. Because it does do that. Roll20 is really damn good. This is not sponsored, by the way, unless Roll20 wants to get to me. I'm just saying. I just really like it because it's noob-friendly. So yeah. I'm going to just bookmark this for later. <laughs> All the same. You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original videos. Make sure to hit them up because it's Joe Cat. You know it's good. You're still here at this point. You know that's the case. Go rewatch it. When you're done with that, don't forget to go and hit the like, subscribe button. Once you've done that, we're good. Because I'm going to go now watch the DM one because I really want to see what he did with this one. I've never DM'd. I may or may not have a idea for a PvP campaign that I may or may not tell the players is going to be a PvP campaign. One shot that I need to probably cut out so that it doesn't spoil it to anyone. Probably should have thought of that in advance. But other than that, I just want to see where this goes. And I kind of want to know what it's like to be on the other side of the... I was going to say screen, but that doesn't really make sense since everything's online right now. Yay, 2020 slash 2021. Everything's on the screen. Yeah. I guess DM sheet? What do you even call that? Again, I've only done the online version. I don't know what it's called when you're actually in a physical place with people. You know, taken out of context, that sounds really bad. But considering how much of a nerd I am, it's also pretty accurate. <laughs> All the same. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Adios.